So I was in a waiting line for about an hour, which was like the scariest hour of my life, <laughs> to their admissions office. And I finally got through to their admissions office and I said, Hi, my name's Eve. Um Sweaty palms as a walk down the Sunday road. I got a mom, but we ain't spoke. And I don't know. I had a heart, don't speak to me anymore. I like your heart, but these last days we me more. Guys, the tea is hot. Apart from it's not tea, it's coffee because I have a crippling addiction. So, oh my god, I nearly choked. I'm choking on my coffee. This is the world showing me something. This is a sign. Oh, welcome, welcome back to my little hubby hole. Um, I'm never gonna use that word again. That was pretty disgusting. Okay, so in all seriousness, this video is a serious video. Well, actually, no, it's not serious. Well, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back. Hey guys, I feel like Shane. Guys! 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 My name is Eve Cornwell. I've just graduated from the University of Bristol. I studied law. And today, I'm going to spill the tea. I'm going to tell a story time. I've never done a story time on my channel before, so I'm quite excited to, you know, like, delve into my past. There was a lot of crying involved. So I might try and cry later on in the video, so like, stay tuned. <laughs> now, as you have probably seen from the title of this video, today I'm going to tell a story I have never told online before. In fact, I don't really think I've told anyone this story before, like, not even to be dramatic, like, I don't really talk about this, ever. So I hope you feel blessed and honoured by the fact I'm sharing some intimate moments with you. I know a lot of you watching are getting your GCSE or your A-level results soon, so this video is kind of about results day. It's also worth mentioning that this video is in partnership with Unite Students, but we'll get onto that later. I've made notes for this video. I'm, oh my, I literally just ripped the page. I've made notes for this video because I'm feeling professional and also there are so many details to the story that I don't want to miss. So I've made notes, so I hope you're like proud of my professionalism. Okay, so as you have probably seen from the title of this video, I'm going to tell the story about how my results day didn't quite go to plan. So let's set the scene, let's go back a few years. I say a few years um, because I'm now old. Um, that, that's actually quite triggering. I, I'm surprised I could make a joke about that to be honest. But let's go back a few years to see like little 18 year old Eve, naive little Eve, naive Eve. Mm. Now I had managed to slim down my options to five because when you apply to university you need to choose five choices via UCAS. I don't know what this was. Five choices by UCAS and I had chosen, let's go through the list, University College London, King's College London, Durham, Nottingham, Bristol. And from those five, I chose to firm King's College London as my first choice. So yeah, shock horror, Bristol wasn't my first choice. So to kind of set them in perspective, King's College London grade requirements at the time, I think they've changed since, but at the time it was A star AA. And I was predicted A star AA, so that was all fine. And Bristol was either three A's or A star AB. Um, so that was my backup choice because they were slightly lower grades. Now to give some context about results day, results days never go quite well for me. And you'll have seen in my previous video about my law school results, I was 1% off a first. 69%. <laughs> I was so close to a first. I needed 70 to a first for a first. And the same was kind of true for A-level results. So I woke up in the morning on results day. I will literally tell you my day. Day in the life. <laughs> I hadn't really slept the night before, to be honest. And I went to UCAS and it hadn't updated at all, so I couldn't tell whether I'd got into my first choice or not. So I waited until about 9am when I went to school, and then I went to my high school, I picked up the big brown envelope that had my results in, I opened it and I looked at my results. And I had missed my grades, so instead of the A star AA that I needed for Kings, I got A star AB. And the B was quite surprising because I got the B in history, which in my opinion was one of my best subjects. And I got an A in biology, which I didn't think was gonna happen. And then I cried for about four hours. I'm really not joking. I'm, I'm literally not even exaggerating. I was absolutely gutted. You know, I'm not gonna beat around the bush on this one. I was completely and utterly, like, distraught. I think the reason why I found results day so hard was because I had no plan B. I didn't have an emergency plan for what would go wrong. 
and I didn't think about what would happen if I didn't get my grades. And that failure I made to kind of create any kind of emergency plan or backup plan and all the panic I went through on that morning of results is exactly the reason why I'm partnering with Unite Students for this video. Now as you guys know I don't really do any brand partnerships at all on this channel unless it is something that I really believe in and I do honestly think if I'd have had access to the Unite Students website or the advice they can give before my results day it would have saved me so much stress and I would have cried for less long and I would just feel so much more comfortable about all of the options that were in front of me. So if you don't mind I'm just going to quickly talk to you about how to develop your plan B and how to have a stress-free results day just real quick and then we're going to get back to the story time. So the Unite Students Clearing Campaign is all about keeping your options super open and keeping a super open mind about results day and what might happen if you don't get into your first or your second choice universities which as I said before I wish I had created some kind of plan B or emergency plan on the day that I could go to and know that it is not the end of the world if you don't get into your first or your second choice university. Seriously, I'll talk about this in the rest of my story time in a second. Not getting into your first choice university can be the biggest blessing in the world. <laughs> so if you head on over to the Unite Students Clearing Campaign website, which is super super great, they have the ultimate guide to clearing 2018 with loads of articles, videos, just straightforward advice to go through. They talk about things such as how and when to apply, how to prepare for clearing, how to find vacancies and how to find last minute accommodation. Basically it's the best panic free solution to results day and I could not get behind this more. If you are getting your results this month please click on the link in the description go and work out your plan B so that on the day of results you're totally calm and you're not panicking at all about what might happen and I've also written a little blog post which might be on their website too so if you want to go and read that check it out link in description Whew. okay so back to the story time where were we ah yes I was crying <laughs> So I'll tell you exactly what happened. So I basically got home, I had my results, I'd missed my grades, I didn't have any kind of plan at all, so like me and my parents were literally like headless chickens just like running around the house like What do we do? Does this mean I'm not getting into university? But I had been given some advice that if you miss your grades you should still phone up the university you hadn't got into and just basically chat with them and see if you can still have a place. So once I got home, the first thing I did is I got straight on the phone and I called up King's College London. And I don't even think I got through to the law faculty. Obviously the phone lines on results day are like jam packed. So I was in a waiting line for about an hour, which was like the scariest hour of my life, <laughs> to their admissions office. And I finally got through to their admissions office and I said, Hi, my name's Eve. Um, I've missed my grades by one mark. I still really want to come to King's. Um, they said, what, what course you enrolled in? I said, law. They basically said, because you missed your grades, we're only really accepting students through clearing now. But our clearing grades are higher than our original grades. So I originally needed A star AA, and their clearing grades had gone up to A star A star A. So I had no chance. I did not have those kind of grades on my sheet of paper. So then I kind of had my epiphany moment. I went on to UCAS. It said my offer from King's had been withdrawn, but sat there on my UCAS form was my offer from Bristol. I still really like Bristol. I thought it was a fantastic university when I went, so I accepted Bristol. And the next few days I would consider to be a period of adjustment. In my mind, my future was very much set in one direction. <laughs> one direction. You're insecure. But my future was very much set in one direction. And then when I got my results, it was suddenly all just turned on its head. And that was something I found really hard to adjust to quickly. And obviously there were a lot of side issues with that. For example, I then had to find very last minute accommodation at Bristol, which by the way, all turned out fine. Like that's not a worry at all. I had to try and find all the new freshers groups at Bristol. Everything was suddenly changed. However, me going to Bristol was literally the best thing that has ever ever happened to me. And I know it sounds really easy for me to say, oh well I was far happier at Bristol than I would have been at King's. But I genuinely think I would be. And I think as a law student you perhaps have some questions that other people don't have when they first start their degree. And that's just because of the pace that you have to really get into your career. Even from your first year you're kind of expected to start engaging with your future career and really thinking about what path you want to take. And therefore going into my law degree I had a very, very clear goal from the start that by the end of my degree, I wanted to be walking out of university, not just with a degree, but with a job. 
Like that for me was my end goal and it always has been. I've always been really, really focused on the employability side of my degree. That focus and that drive is probably based on my background and that if I didn't get a job, I probably would not be able to self-fund myself through the LPC and through the rest of the process. And therefore it was really important to me that I went to a university that had really great career and employment support. I think sometimes it's very easy for law students to look at rankings tables online or like commentary online and consider whether their university makes them more employable or less employable and from my perspective as like an 18 year old going into university my biggest question was that if I didn't go to King's College London whether I would still be as employable and whether I would still be considered as a good enough candidate and I can honestly say that my experience at Bristol and the kind of support that I had from day one really guaranteed there was absolutely no difference in where I could go with my law degree. And I did honestly feel and got encouraged to feel that my, my options were exponential and that I could do anything. And that's something really powerful. The point I'm trying to get across in this video is no matter where you go, whether you get into your firm choice because you got your grades, whether you go into your backup choice, whether you go to another university via clearing, no matter where you go, um, if you have the drive and the ambition and you go to somewhere where you feel supports you, you can go as far as you want. And your results do not define how well you do in your career or in your future prospects at all. And I can say that now being a graduate from university and looking back and thinking how small minded I was to think it made so much of a difference between two different institutions and where I wanted to go and where I wanted to go with my future goals. I think the institution you attend does not define you. I think what defines you is your own goals and aspirations and what hopefully occurs is that the institution gives you the support and the mentorship needed to go and apply to those jobs or try new opportunities, new experiences. That's why the university is important. Everything else I do think comes from you and if you want to be successful, you will be successful wherever you go. Whew. And that is my motivational speech over. <laughs> As I said earlier in the video, if you do want more support and you do want to make sure that you have that emergency plan or that plan B, please click on the link in the description and look at what the lovely people at Unite Students have written out for you because it's like really good advice. If you have any questions about the results process or more questions to do with law or anything, put them in the box down below and I will see you very soon. Right outside your front door on my 12 speed I got your emotions tattooed on my sleeve I think about you all the time